in 2021 when uh, Abdul Razak Gurna received the prize. A lot of people were surprised because they didn't know his work, but the person who was the most surprised was Abdul Razak Gurna himself. When the permanent secretary Mats Mann called, he refused to believe it. He just didn't think it was true. And that had been a hoax a couple of years earlier when an Irish writer, John Bamville, was a fool to thinking, into thinking that, that he had received the prize. So Gurna did not believe it. And in the end, the permanent secretary, he wanted to know whether Gurna would come to Stockholm. And in the end, they had to resort to saying, well, if you were to receive the prize, would you come to Stockholm? <laughs> a hypothetical. Uh, so that was kind of funny. It took him quite a while to get him to believe that he had received the prize. I am Åsa Wickfors. I'm a professor of theoretical philosophy at Stockholm University and I am a member of the Swedish Academy where I sit on chair number seven. When I received a phone call from the permanent secretary of uh, the Swedish Academy, Anders Olsson, I was very surprised. Uh, I'm a professor of philosophy, not of literature, and I, I never thought about the Swedish Academy as, as a place where I would end up. Uh, but it is very exciting and very interesting and very hard to say no to. I mean, I always read a lot of fiction, but I read a lot more fiction now and a lot more interesting fiction, I would say, because, of course, what, what you get on, on your reading list is a tremendously interesting uh, list of authors. We meet once a week on Thursdays uh, throughout most of the year, where we uh, make decisions about various kinds of prizes and stipends that we hand out to Swedish writers and Swedish scholars. Uh, then, of course, there's also the work with the Nobel Prize that the Nobel Committee works on a lot. It certainly affects me to see people who know so much about literature and work so hard uh, in preparation for all our prizes uh, and these discussions we have where these works are analyzed and, and evaluated uh, and all these different angles on, on a piece of uh, writing. I think that is a fascinating thing and makes me really believe in the, in the capacity of having uh, uh, well-grounded and rational and interesting discussions around, around literature. As a philosopher, you read with your uh, philosophical glasses, and many of them, I mean, Annie Arnaud, for example, she's quite philosophical in her, in her writing, and she's, she's been teaching philosophy, and I can see it in the text in a way that maybe you wouldn't necessarily see if you were not a philosopher. So I think it brings perspectives into the reading of the text that uh, can be quite fruitful. Um, then my experience as a researcher also, I mean, I work on this knowledge resistance uh, program where I work on, you know, how to have a good discussion so that we get our best possible decisions. And I think the quality of discussion is something I care a lot about. And I think I try to contribute to that in as, as good a way as I possibly can. I think we live in an era where, where we have a very new information landscape and a lot of people read uh, their texts that they read, they read on social media, and it tends to be snippets or little videos and so on. Uh, and that doesn't quite bring you the kind of uh, extensive, more deep reading that you also need uh, for your well-being and also for your thinking uh, to be strengthened and your language to be strengthened. So I, I really think we live in an era when we do need to emphasize the importance of literature again 